Happy Saturday, it's Aaron. I'm with Bowtie Treasures. I'm always happy to be here. I'm a Dixie Belle content creator. And it's Saturday night, which means it's time to do some painting, some demonstration, hanging out together, chatting, whatever you like to do. I'm glad you're here. As you pop in, say hey. Let us know if you're watching on replay or hey, maybe even what you're working on, but it's time to get going. And I'm excited to see you guys uh, hanging out with us tonight. So definitely say hi. We always like to see where you're watching from. And uh, we have a big project before us. And I'm looking forward to doing my best to demonstrate some techniques on this china cabinet. I'll be using Dixie Bell chalk mineral paint tonight and a few of their quality brushes to accomplish hopefully a nice beautiful classy blended uh, chalk paint look using some blue chalk mineral paint colors that's my goal so let's get right into it tonight uh, i worked on this china cabinet some time ago i just haven't been able to get back around to it i've already cleaned it with white lightning applied a coat of gray boss which is kind of a standard procedure for me but uh, definitely when you know or expect something to bleed, this is a good opportunity to help prevent that using Dixie Bell's Boss. So I've done that already. And then I put a coat of Midnight Sky on there, which is really a dark gray blue. And it's going to serve as our, perp our uh, base for this project. Currently, and we'll see how it goes, I'm hoping to use three colors. Yankee Blue from the top, Bunker Hill next and then we'll finish off with midnight sky i'm gonna do my best to do a little bit of blending with those colors tonight i kind of have a plan that i'm going to work to about right at this shelf with my first color this shelf for my next color and we'll kind of finish it keep it dark at the bottom and then maybe down below if we can in these panels here if i can get my there we go right there i feel like a weatherman and coming from the north uh, we might do some blending and highlighting of those panels. I think that would be really nice to see as well. Uh, I think what I'd like to do is uh, go ahead and get going on this. And what I think let's focus on for now is about is the base and we'll work our way up. And then uh, if we need to, I'll get on a smaller stool or cut and sit on the floor and we'll work on the base. But for now, let's kind of work top, uh, top to bottom to bottom and I think that would work out really well. Um, so really again th this is uh, ready to go and I've got a few brushes to work with and usually when you're blending it's, it's a good idea to have pretty much one color per brush and then maybe one color or one brush for blending. So we'll kind of use that, uh, that, that plan tonight. In case you're wondering I did tape off the top because I think it would be nice to have a little bit of extra a little bit of the original wood showing. And I think it'll be almost like having the stained top to a, a, a kitchen table, that kind of thing. It's good, just going to give it a nice, uh, really pop, uh, almost like a pop of color, but it, it's just the original stained wood. So I've taped that off with some blue painter's tape. So if you're wondering what's happening up there, uh, that's the goal. Uh, I do have my windows taped so I can kind of avoid getting too much paint on them, but I'll I'll clean that up at, at the last step. Um, what I don't want to do right now is paint all the way across. I want to paint and while the paint's wet, I want to blend. So we're going to have to kind of work our way around. Uh, I painted a china cabinet a few months back and, uh, with somewhat of the same technique. And so uh, this won't be the first time that I've done uh, this project or this type of blending, but I think it looks really nice. I just haven't used these colors. I'm going to use an oval uh, small brush, kind of of my blending. You could use a uh, best dang brush to do this, but it's going to be a little tougher to use a big brush, in my opinion, on smaller sections. So these are the flat smalls, really great brush for small areas. And I don't have a lot of areas to cover, so I could use a, a mini, but when I get over to the sides, it, it's not gonna give me as much freedom. So we'll just kind of mix it up and see how it goes. But for now, this is an old oval small. It's probably one of my first oval smalls I owned. And it's seen a few days, but it's kind of getting that nice feathered fan feel. So I think that's gonna work well for us. 
First thing we need to do, I'm gonna always keep my mister bottle handy. I like to give my brushes a mist. That helps them uh, take in that paint really well. Uh, I, that's kind of a nice thing that I like to do. <clears throat> so we're just gonna go in there and get that paint on. Make sure you guys can see okay. I did have to do some minor repairs on this piece, but uh, fortunately it was in pretty good shape when I bought it from a, a uh, thrift store. And I kind of feel like I rescued it because it just was not, um, they had marked it down so far. And you know, people don't, uh, a lot of people don't uh, have needs for China cabinets anymore, but I like the size of this one. I think it would fit in most smaller homes. And, um, have a really good market. So I'm using my shelf and you can't see it now, but there's a shelf from about right here. So this is kind of my uh, stopping point. So right now, this is about where the one inch brush isn't as ideal just because it's a larger area, but the one inch is gonna come in handy as I move around to the front. So we'll get as much done as we can in the next few minutes that we have together. And I think you'll get the, the principle of the blending how many of you like to blend? I'm really curious. Uh, you know, I hear a lot of people, they, they might find it difficult, but hopefully I can give you some tips or some different approaches to try so your blending works for you. And not everybody has the same blending technique, okay? So for me, I like to go a little bit past my stopping point or my reference point just so I can blend the next color in, okay? So that's now, one thing you can do, you can also go ahead and paint the other color and leave a gap and then merge the two. That's another option. There's many ways to go about that. <clears throat> I'm gonna take my other one inch brush and I wanna keep this area wet. So I'm gonna sp spray it with a little, my misting bottle. And I'm again, I'm looking at my shelf and I'd like to go ahead and put a little bit of color underneath where I'm gonna blend. I'm not quite into my other color yet, so I'm not ready to blend. So kind of giving myself a little bit of a head start. Get that color in there. You don't want that other color to dry on you, okay? All right, so now you might go ahead and put that color in there and give it a little bit of a soft, just give it a, a soft start to the blend. Uh, I like to suggest little X's like back and forth or infinity symbols. That'll mix those colors together. I'm work to the front a little bit. If you need more blending, this is where I would come in and use, let me miss this uh, oval small. And this is where I'm gonna use a light hand and do a softer blend. I like to have a rag in my hand. In fact, it's already here where you can wipe off. Right now, I'm really not really blending right now. I'm just kind of reworking my way into the blend. I think the best thing I can tell you right now is don't overly work, work it and don't overly stress. Just keep a, keep a light hand, mix those colors together. See if I can give you a different view of that. <clears throat> Sometimes different angles will give you a different view. And it looks like I need to go ahead and bring in a little bit more of that first, second color in there. I try not to, at this point, spray anymore. If you can get this technique working for you, you oftentimes can achieve a beautiful blend on the first try, but you may have to let it dry. I'm gonna miss a little lower. You may have to let it dry and do the blend one more time. But that's how I try to blend on the first try. You're mixing those colors. You need the right technique or the right brush, the right consistency of liquid, misting, all that. But that's just a way to, to make that. So now I'm kind of uh, still cr crisscrossing because there's still a little bit of blend happening there. I'm at the second shelf, about right here. 
So at this point, I need to start putting the last bit of color before I bring in the next color. We will work our way around to the front. I do have to be careful in doing that because if I'm working my way to the front, the sides are starting to dry. So you kind of are overlapping a little bit. You can make it work. Maybe go do the opposite side of this one and then come back, let this side dry a little bit. Those are all just different ways. All right, so that color is doing good. Let me give it a quick, just little, keep it wet. If you're following me on Instagram or Facebook, it's probably usually a good idea because oftentimes I'll post progress pics on things that I paint during the live. So if you like to stay up to date with things that I'm working on, that's a good way to do that. And I'm usually kind of either posting sneak, sneak peeks or progress pics throughout the week. All right, so I'm gonna give it a quick mist right where I'm gonna mix those two colors. So the first attempt, I'm using the same brush, crisscrossing those two colors together just to start the blend, okay? It's not required that I come back with a blending brush, but I'm gonna come back, lay that color down with that oval small and do that fanning kind of crisscrossing blend. Okay, I just want those lines to disappear. That's my goal. But let's put that to the side and let's continue on to the front. Again, different ways of blending. Now, so right here, I've already, I kind of come around, came around to the front. We use the shelves as a guide. I like to have a reference point or I'd probably be all over the place. And we're going to midnight sky um, pretty much at the base. So that's, that's our guide. Let's, let's keep going. I, I want to demonstrate again how to work in tight spaces. So the first thing we want to do is continue that lighter color which is yankee blue do we have to blend no can we blend yes and blending should not be difficult it's not hard to do if i ever give pointers as far as how to blend it's always going to be work quickly keep it wet and use a light hand. Those are probably my top three tips for blending effectively. And don't stress over imperfection. Um, I Last night on my Facebook page, I was live with those following me on Facebook and we blended on a jewelry box. I'll be posting that video on YouTube later tonight but you should be able to blend on small spaces and large spaces. It usually just comes down to getting the right size brush. So you can see right now how the one inch brush really helps me get in tight spaces. Okay, so there's our shelf. There's our reference point. I've, I like to go past my reference point, so we're a little lower. i switch to the other blue. Keep that wet. Start below your blend and get some paint on there. You don't want to charge right into your blend color. And then I'm going to work my way up a little bit of water and work into that paint color. Technically, I don't really need to use a blending brush here, but we're going to go ahead and do it. Sorry, keep jump it in front of the camera there, but I'm gonna use my oval small. Again, it's an older one. It's kind of a little bit of a fan. And that blend is smooth and works really well. It's a lot easier to blend on smaller, smaller spaces, I will tell you that. Okay, so we're gonna keep going down. Back to our Bunker Hill Blue. 
we got to get to our next checkpoint, if you will. I may not continue this process all the way around because I, I want to kind of keep some of the processes fresh. And I think after you see me do this a few times, you'll you get the idea, right? I probably could have also done this side, but I think my brain is working that fast tonight. All right, so I'm gonna miss. Anytime your brush has been sitting around, you might need to give it just a little bit of a quick miss to freshen up that paint. You don't want hard edged bristles. So you can see the gap, right? All right, now we're gonna go into it. A little mist. I'm gonna do a soft blend between the two colors. You might need to get a little bit more paint on your brush if you don't. So technically I've already blended with this brush, but I have been using the oval small just to finish it off. Okay. Just wanna hide those brush strokes, that's the goal. And this is the second coat of paint on this since the first coat was Midnight Sky. So I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and add the second color of paint. And this will be the last color, hopefully. I won't have to do any more touch-up paint. So pretty much the rest of the base of this will be all Midnight Sky, except for any blending that I want to do. So that's going to be the goal. So if we step back, unfortunately, because of the way paint dries, you know, some of it's wet, some of it's dry, you can't really appreciate the blend, but you should be able to see almost like a grayish blue a nice vibrant blue and then back to midnight sky. Oftentimes I'll have a plan. Many times I don't have my plan or my plans change once I start. Just because you know you don't know exactly, you have an idea of how it's going to work out, but until you start really feeling it, getting in there, you don't know. So. I'm just putting my second coat on, moving quickly. I would say this is pretty much my normal pace. Might seem fast, but if you get the techniques down, you should be able to move quickly. That makes you more efficient and you can get more done. Okay, so here's the deal. We're, we're getting to the, uh, the featured section and that is this panel. So what I don't want to do is get too far ahead without thinking about, okay, I need to keep this paint wet enough so I can blend. So let me get some paint in there. I don't need to keep going on the left. I am looking on just getting that second coat of paint on, and then we're going to blendy blend, blend, blend. Need a good coat of color. Now, because did you notice that I, put this color all the way on the panel. I didn't just do the edges. So whatever I put on this, it's going to mix with the midnight sky, which I'm okay with. Let's do some of the um, Yankee blue. I'm just gonna put, let's see if I just putting one stroke. So that'll be our measure, okay? And I'm just gonna do a little bit of the blending. So I'm blending it over the previous painted Midnight Sky. So I'm mixing the color. Basically when I say blend it, you're, you're basically, basically blending and then I'm going out a little wider. Because this is a larger panel, I could use the Besting brush, well, but we've been rocking the Oval Small, at least my Oval Small, it's a little older. And now I'm just gonna soften this up. I'm just looking to hide brush strokes. Okay, that, so it looks nice and soft. Wipe it off any excess needed. If you're having to put a lot of pressure, your paint might be too dry or too thick. So watch out for that. All right. I did not miss this blend before. 
This may need two attempts, we'll see, but I, I really rather not. So it's almost just like this glowing, <clears throat> come back a little bit with the midnight sky in a couple areas. So we just created this nice classy glow. Well, the next thing I, I talk, thought about was what about taking this glow effect down the middle here? It's, um, that's another option that we can try. All right, so there's Midnight Sky. Let's repeat what we did on the side over here. Let's grab a little bit of, of um, gotta remember Yankee Blue. Let's go this way. I may change my mind on that later, but for now we're gonna go this way. So I'm filling the middle in. I have my brush ready and I'm gonna slowly mix it into the Midnight Sky. If you need to go this way to make sure it's not too straight. Now come back with our blending brush and we'll soften it up. I'm using my rag to kind of wipe off any excess. Guess what? That was the easy one. You know why? There's no standard. <laughs> that means the next drawer I have to make sure it matches the standard, right? So that's uh but that's going to really accentuate the bow front, but we've got to match it. So let's see how well we can do with the next drawer. Since this is my first time to blend ever, I'm just kidding. It's not. <laughs> that would be something, wouldn't it? I've never blended before. This is working so great. Trust me. I don't know anybody who's blending for the first time on live, on a live. So um, it takes practice. So notice I'm only doing one drawer at a time because I, it's very important that the paint stays wet. You don't want to get ahead of yourself and get too far. Okay, back to our Yankee blue. And we pretty much did this right here. And up and down. So just go through the same steps, right? Keep in mind that I'll have hardware on his, on this that should dissipate any super crazy focus that someone wants to put on inspect. Nobody's gonna soup, come up real close and inspect your blend. It's all gonna be a part of the group. So the hardware all plays, all plays together. And I may, I may do some gilding wax on this. I think that's always a really nice look. How do you think I did on the second drawer? I'm doing all right. You guys can inspect my work, I don't care. I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and do one more section before we call this a finished piece. So our goal is to, let's do this one more panel, and then we'll see where we are on time. Putting the second coat of Midnight Sky on. Okay, so that's Midnight Sky. Now we need to charge in with our Yankee Blue. And remember last time we just did a stroke down the middle. And then I just kind of started mixing that in. No guarantees at this point that I'll match the other side because I may have put less paint on, more paint. I'm doing little small X's right now, blending the two colors together. If you want to do circles, whatever works for you. Now I need to get to my blending brush, which is oval small. And then this is where I finish it out. I 
I could look over to the other side right now, but it's kind of too late. I mean, whatever I just did is kind of done. And keep in mind that the other side over here, it's already starting to dry. So it's, it would be hard for me to compare the two sides and make any adjustments to this. Now, maybe I didn't get high enough or low enough, but uh, it's not that hard for me to just let this dry and repaint it, right? So you just kind of have to have a little bit of trust in yourself that that's going to work out. The magic of blending. So that's really going to be, to me, I think this is going to turn out to be a really beautiful focus point. And the reason why it's going to be because I have six hardware to put in here. So by the time you put a hardware in here, the ice doesn't have a choice but to go down the china cabinet down to the blended section. So. Um, all of it, I think, is um, it's going to turn out wor working really well. And then probably maybe some gilding wax, polished hardware, and we should have this thing looking fantastic before it's all said and done. I hope that helps. A uh, few techniques on blending, small spaces, large spaces, inside panels, bow front drawers. Um, work quickly, keep it wet. You know, I like to do little crisscross X's. Some people like to do circles. I uh, have no problem with other techniques, but uh, find the one that works for you. Um, so anyways, I think that, uh, that should do it for tonight. Stay tuned. Follow me on Facebook and uh, Instagram so you can see some uh, progress pics. All right. If I missed your question, I'll go back and watch it here in a few minutes. I'm Aaron with Bowtie Treasures, Dixie Bell content creator. Thanks so much for watching tonight, and you guys take care. Do something creative this weekend, all right? See you later. That's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.